Hi guys! Today we're here to prep a syllabus and a Word document to convert it into an accessible PDF. So you may notice that this may add a few extra steps to your process, but it's really not too difficult and it shouldn't be too time consuming. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to be working with a syllabus from Dean Sweats today, so no big deal. It's just the boss. We got this. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is follow an appropriate heading structure. So what that means is that instead of uh, formatting, you know, adjusting some of the formatting in your document using some of these items in the toolbar up here, we're actually going to use the styles pane. So we'll open that up. And uh, the first thing to do is to, to adjust the title on this page so that, oops, I'm not with the graphic, but we will get to that in a little bit. Um, so we're going to do this title uh, style to that, right? Because that's the, the title of our document. Next, we're going to go through and each of the headings that he has in the document, oops, um, we're going to highlight and uh, change to the heading one. And if he had any other headings in this document that were um, subheadings, we would do those as heading two um, and heading three and so forth. It goes up to heading six. Um, the key is to not skip any heading levels. Uh, we need to keep them all nested. So, okay, that's all of our headings in the document. And we're just going to go over here to heading one. Whoops. And uh, looks like all of our headings got included in that. So now that they've all, uh, they're all using that style. So we are good to go there. Um, the next thing to do is to move on uh, to some of the, the document text styles that we have. So you'll see uh, this list right here uh, is just indented, but it really needs to be a bulleted list. So what we can do is actually use some of the formatting tools up here, whether we have a bulleted list or an ordered list. Uh, so in this case, we'll just go ahead and, uh, and make it a bulleted list. Um, Let's see, there we go. Now we've got it in line with our other bulleted lists. Um, and so that way, a screen reader will also be able to appropriately read that now because the, that is using a bulleted list as opposed to just a dash or maybe an asterisk. Um, another thing to do, uh, again, similar to, to how we did the heading styles, um, let's say I don't believe that Dean Sweats has anything in this document that's in bold, but I know a lot of people will put a sentence in bold or a sentence in italics to really stress that to the students. So the way to do that uh, is to highlight the text and instead of going up here to the top and hitting bold, you actually want to go over here and do strong. So it has the same effect, but now it's been coded on the back end of this document so that a screen reader will actually be able to read that as uh, something that has been emphasized. So and then again, if you were doing something in italics, um, let's say, you know, maybe the Holland Symposium was a name of something that really needed to be um, in italics, you'd use this emphasis, right? And so, so that's how you would do that. So um, the next thing we're going to take a look at is the link text. Um, so in your syllabus, we need to make sure that uh, if you're using hyperlinks like this one, that needs to be a descriptive link. So this one is perfect. This is the name of the book. So uh, it is the five elements of effective thinking. So that's exactly the type of link that we want. What we don't want to see is anything that says click here or read more, um, partly because a screen reader can navigate um, just based on that link text. And so if we have non-descriptive names like that, it's really difficult for someone using a screen reader to uh, put that information into context. So the other thing we want to keep in mind is that we don't want to have any hyperlinks in the text. So, um, so let's go ahead and make a change to this one. Uh, you'll see that in the disability services statement, we have this URL for the disability services website. And we really don't want the URL to be in the text like this because a screen reader is going to read out every single letter of that. So it will say www.angelo.edu slash ADA. So if you have a lot of hyperlinks in your document, it can really um, create fatigue for anyone using a screen reader. So the thing to do if you have a document such as a syllabus or a CV that's also meant to be a print document, 
uh, is that we will take these uh, hyperlinks and actually add them as footnotes at the end, or end notes, I'm sorry, at the end of your document. So in this case, we're going to take this out. Um, we're actually going to make disability or student disability services website our, uh, our hyperlink text. That's going to be really good descriptive text um, for this. Oops, I'm sorry, that's happening off screen. So that's going to be our URL, right? Um, we're also going to, so that way, you know, we've prepped it for digital consumption. Uh, and now we're going to go over here to add that, uh, that end note, right? So you just switch over here to the references pane at the top and insert footnote, right? Or end note, I'm sorry. Um, and then we can add that here. Um, so moving on, the next thing that we're going to focus on is uh, correctly formatting tables. So hopefully, I know a lot of people include a course schedule in their document. Um, so the best way to, to do this is to do it in a table format as opposed to just using tabs. Um, we really do want to keep that with, with uh, tables. The, the best uh, thing to do with this is to, now we really don't want to use the styles pane over here. Um, you know, I know a lot of times we will want um, this top row um, to be styled differently. You want to show that this is like the headings of your table, but we really um, don't want to use the styles over here to do that. We actually want to use the, the table design up here at the top. And then you can choose one of these styles for your table. Um, so I think what I will do is uh, maybe we'll go with this style or this. Hmm. There's really a ton of different options here. Um, I think I kind of like this one. So we'll go with this one. Um, the other thing to do uh, in the, uh, I'll do this so you can see it a little easier. So in the header row of your, uh, the heading row, you'll want to right click and go down to table properties. In table properties, you'll, uh, head over to row and make sure that you have repeat as header row at the top of each page even though you know this table is only visible on this page um, this is the and you also want to allow row to uh, or actually I think you don't want it to break across pages and that is not going to be an issue on this page but we want to go ahead and check that off just to be sure you'll also notice there's a place for alt text so if someone is using a screen reader um, maybe we would need to provide a description for this table to help put it into context. In this case, we don't need to do that though, um, because this paragraph that precedes the, the table explains that this is a tentative outline of the schedule for the course. So we should be covered there. Um, so now, uh, the only remaining item that we need to address in our document is uh, this graphic up here at the top. We've added the logo. So if you have a graphic or some kind of image in your document, you're going to want to right click that and go to format picture. Um, you'll go over to uh, this, uh, this is the layout and properties icon, and you'll use the alt text drop down. Now you don't need to worry about filling in the title, but you do need to add a description. In our case, we're going to write ASU logo. Oops, logo. Um, and now we're done with that. Okay, so um, now our document is done, which should be prepped and, uh, and ready uh, to now convert this into a PDF. Um, just to, um, to double check our document, you can go over here, I know you can't see it because it was off screen, but at the bottom of that styles pane, you have the option to show the styles guide in the document so you can see what has been used throughout the document. Um, so you can see this is our, our head. this is a good way to check your work before you um, exit. So we've got our, uh, our heading, or, sorry, this is our title up here. Um, this is using um, our heading one, which is what we want. Uh, we've got a list paragraph here. Um, 
and we've got our uh, strong emphasis here and uh, all of our end notes are identified at the end of the document so it's just a great way to check and uh, I feel pretty confident that we are now ready to convert this to a PDF so uh, thanks so much for watching this has been part one and please tune in for part two so you can see what actually happens with that accessibility report um, when we do the um, the conversion and export to a PDF thanks <laughs>